Um, my name is Kenny Robinson, and I'm the Director of Career Professional Partnership Development in the School of Education at Hunter College. And um, we are excited to have such a wonderful turnout <coughs> of counseling students, both um, alums. How many people just graduated last week? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many brand new students are here? <laughs> so this is sort of a cross section. So uh, we wanted to make sure you all connect because you're all going to be colleagues in this field. Yeah. And what we do in career um, services, I work with you. So like, as opposed to for you, like we always like to say where you know people get prepositionally challenged. So. I always say I work with you, not for you, because I'm not going to get the job. It's up to you to get the job. So we're going to set you up for success, but you have to invest in yourself. And you have to become your own advocate. We're going to give you steps on how to become advocates, but we're going to make you, you know, the advocate yourself. Thank you to our panelists for joining us this evening. Thank you to all of you um, for coming out tonight. So the CSI is an international honor society that values academic and professional excellence in counseling. The CSI chapter at Hunter was reactivated in the fall of 2017. So uh, to join us, you receive a few um, membership benefits, academic um, excellence, professional development, awards, an opportunity to network, uh, leadership development opportunities uh, to serve on the chapter. We do have a lot of openings um, for the next school year or uh, the next semester. So if you are interested in um, joining, please speak to one of us. Um, so for each of the panelists, this is a question for each of you. Can you identify an obstacle or adversity that you encountered during your professional journeys and how you overcame it? So uh, one, of, one of the situations that I encountered in my professional career was Right after I started my business, and I really didn't know what it meant to start your own business, you gotta have some money to have a business. You gotta have either income coming in, another gig, something, because it takes money to keep a business going. So that was a big lesson. But so, when I, so you know, on my resume, you know, I started my career in something that you started as a counselor, moved up into it as a manager, done on other administrative positions. So on my resume, it looks like I'm a great administrator and a great manager, right? Okay, I took one of the most bureaucratic um, positions within one of the largest behavioral health care organizations ever. And I thought, honestly, that I could win. I was like, I'm, I'm just, you know, teaching what we're trying to you know. But what I didn't create in my looking for a job was more than the money. The money means something. But what I learned from saying yes to a job that I really to be honest with you, I was not qualified for. I didn't know that initially, but again, my commitment was money, and that was it. I wasn't really concerned with much less than anything else. Okay? Took this job, it was grueling. It was bureaucratic. I dealt with a lot of different personalities. I dealt with a lot of resistance. And I ended up, for the first time in my life, quitting a job before I had a job, which, trust me when I tell you, there's no price that you can put to your peace of mind. I'm going to tell you that right now. Now, not everybody can afford, not, and I didn't think I could even, really, afford but what I, to quit a job before I had a job. What I did know is I couldn't stay there. And this is what I created, and I really quote asked that you do the same, because what you want may not necessarily be on the job board, okay? I created that I wanted to be in an environment where people were loving, kind, compassionate, and competent, and saw too much of success, and I made some money. <laughs> and I made some money. What I learned for myself, and this may not be what you what you need, but this is my lesson. Environment means as much as the dollar. That's what I got. Because if you're making good cash and you go to work and you're stressed, unhappy, not fulfilled, there's no money that can make up for that. As far as I'm concerned. And that and so a lot of it has to do with your personal priorities. I got clear on mine. Okay, so my just professionally in counseling, um, I did a good job. So when I was a, a, an assistant principal of pupil personnel services, I did an excellent job. And then what happens is they keep giving you more. <laughs> so the principal will give you more things to do, and you'll do them 
excellently because that's just your personality. It doesn't have anything to do with the world or or anything else, but your personalities as you move up and you're moving up is excellent. And so you can't do anything else. And they keep giving you more. So everybody gets tired. And when you get tired and overwhelmed with work, not because you can't do it, but just because there are not enough hours in the day, some things might fall away. So what I learned how to do was a creative email. So when I was asked to do things that was not in my contract or not in the purview of people, personnel, services, I would write the creative email. <laughs> I would love, this is a marvelous idea. I can't, I can't even believe to think how beneficial it would be to the student body. I am so sorry. And it doesn't fall within my purview. Uh, how do you ladies balance work and life? It, it takes hard decisions. So um, I did, so when I first started out in counseling, you know how to, you have a choice between elementary school and secondary school. And you have enough degrees that you can be an adjunct professor somewhere, go back in my day, you know, you have a master's or advanced certificate. You could teach at a community college or something. So when I had my children, I found that if I was really counseling or teaching, could be teaching at that point, I didn't have enough left for my pain hunch in my own. That's not acceptable to me. For me, the children that God gave me, I, I couldn't have had a greater gift. And I wasn't going to mess it up because of two cents from the DOE. So I realized I couldn't do that. So I took a break. So that is your personal choice. It is nobody else's choice. It's nobody else's responsibility, but you want your own, and you know yourself. I knew that I couldn't give to elementary and secondary school students on my own. So I did, I, I became an adjunct professor. I had four different folders, four different colors, and I would go to that color, depending on the color was where I was going to teach that day. They were grown folks like you. And I, would, I didn't have to be responsible for any mistakes I made with my brother. And I had a family that could come home and kiss the baby. You know, you know, we didn't say, roll over, have breakfast. We're going to turn the day around. We're going to have breakfast tonight. Because I was not making dinner. <laughs> what I learned um, more recently is that there is absolutely no such thing as work life balance. It's a myth. It's really about choice. There's no balance. No. It's about your priorities and what's most important to you. And, I, and, you know, I talk a lot in my work around, you know, there was a time I was career driven, now I'm life driven. It's about your life. And what happens to many of us in, as we embark on our careers, that becomes for many people a focal point. And everything else goes to the wayside. No. You want to look, as you build your career, you want to look at your full life because you'll, you will neglect your, um, relationships, your spirituality, you will neglect your health for sure. And and, and so what you really want to what I would encourage you guys to do is to really look at your full life. Um, and I would also add to that um, recognizing boundaries, recognizing that you have rights to boundaries, uh, recognizing that they're important. And you know, as you said, you know, choice, choosing to uphold your boundaries. Uh, one experience that I had um, in not recognizing uh, um, boundaries and stuff like that, and not developing, um, uh, 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 you know, um, taking care of self um, in the whole, um, is what I was diagnosed with cancer uh, three years ago. Um, I'm cancer free today. Um, and so getting the diagnosis um, kind of slapped me. Face. Uh, having a brush with death in the face. Uh, it's an extreme situation, but um, having that um, kind of um, put me back on track um, to recognize that they're wrong to um, Work is important to me, but my life and other areas of my life is also important to me. So just recognizing that um, these boundaries are important and not bringing the work home. What are questions that employers can't ask? during an interview or shouldn't ask. And when asked a question like that, 
what's the best way or creative way to respond to, um, you know, to navigate the situation? It's really on, on you to know what you're comfortable asking. So I know when I started my career working in the substance abuse treatment field, the parents weren't supposed to ask the, the, the candidate if they were in recovery. Now, mind mm -hmm. you, they weren't supposed to ask the candidate in, if they were in recovery, yet in some cases saying yes made the difference in terms of your hire. It was a very strange thing. So what I would counsel people around that, it really came down to, because I knew on the employer's side that in some cases, not all, saying yes, I am in recovery would make the difference. In other cases, it's like a trick. You, should, you shouldn't have answered that question. It's very strange what happens when I interview you these tricky questions. If anything, I would tell people, if, if, with regard to that question, not to dwell on it. Not to dwell, but talk more about what you're bringing to the organization. Um, so, you know, the people are not supposed to ask you um, if you've been arrested, you know, stuff like that. They're, they're not supposed to ask you those questions. But again, I think the, I, or if you're, if you, if you're a, a mom or a dad, if you're a parent, they're not supposed to ask you those questions. I think, though, rather than a candidate saying, that's an illegal question, I'm not supposed to, you're not supposed to <laughs> ask me that question. I think it's more nuancing the interview. Share. So you can share closing thoughts, and obviously you'll have your small group to share closing thoughts. So you're probably going to do two closing thoughts, like one here in the big room and one in the smaller group. So if um, anyone can start. The, whole, the theme of the, the day, uh, think like an employer, act like a brand, is really, really powerful. So one of the things I'd like to encourage you to do is to think about what employers are looking for in, in, in employees, to just have that, have those ideas in your mind so that you can look to see where your strengths are, the areas of, of growth. And then, um, and in your brand is so important. You know, all of you guys, working here as an, as, as an advisor, I start to put together who you are, like day one, not for nothing. All of you are great, by the way. But know that people are evaluating you. Like, what, uh, what do you want to people to, to know to be left with when, when, you, when you interact with them? You know what I'm saying? And, and so really being conscious of how you present yourself, you know, what comes out of your mouth, uh, is very, very important. And we'll talk more about that throughout the program. But I want to just close with saying, you're coming here to get your degrees, but know that when, you, when it comes down to interviewing, employers are looking for all of you. Look, and you're bringing all of who you are, not just your training, right? You're bringing your, your life experiences together, career changes, you know, not for nothing. You've got a whole lot going on in terms of all of what you've contributed to the workforce, understanding the nuances of work, knowing how to get along. Knowing how to work on a team is really, really key. And you're going to get that through your group work here at Hunter. You're going to be in a group, you're not going to like it. Someone's not going to be holding up the end of the bargain. And we were talking about this other day. You're not going to like it. And you're going to learn how to negotiate with other people to get your A. Because everybody wants A, A plus. To get your A. <laughs> you're going to learn how to overcome whatever you're feeling about that person and, and rise above, right? And that's what's going to show up in the workplace, right? So know that you're bringing more to the interview than your master's degree. And you're going to learn how to, nav to, to use those other skills, all the skills that you have, to have you stand up from everybody else. Well, I, the things that when I first saw it that I thought about was job, career, and vocation. Are you just looking for a job? Do you expect it to be your career? Or is it your vocation, which comes from the Latin vocabulary calling? Do you feel that you're called to do this? Mm -hmm. And you have to be absolutely honest with yourself. If it's just a job, look and see if you fulfill the, can do the requirements. If it's not a stretch for you, you're not gonna mess anybody up, take the job, and it'll be over in five years max. You know, it's gonna be a job. If it's a career, and you wanna stay in it for, it probably gonna last about 20. <coughs> After that, you'll be obsolete. You won't have any of the skills necessary 
unless you um, professionally invest in yourself.